to everyone that is here. The Connor family would like to thank you for just joining in on this joyous occasion of Alton's 60th birthday party. We're going to have one of Alton's friends from his childhood to come and tell us a little bit about Alton when they were younger. So now Michael Daly, uh, Alton's buddy from, from childhood. <laughs> Oh, how's everybody doing? Well, Alton, glad to be here. Think so. <laughs> I tell you, I thank God for him. Uh, we grew up together. Um, Alton was a couple of years ahead of me. Um, I'm 58. Uh, I kind of came along with his brother, Algier. Algier and I went in the army together, but Alton was the he was older than us, but uh, we all came up in um, Roberts Park. We're we're products of the projects. We're we're project uh, project boys. And I ain't talking about somebody's experiment. I'm talking about some you know experiment. Somebody took us under their wing. With a, I'm talking about projects. And the projects that we came up in Roberts Park, you know, that was our world. It was wonderful. I loved it. I loved it, and uh, because uh, you know times were so different then, um, but life beyond the projects for us kind of you know just when we were coming up, that was our world, um, and just to see Alton now, uh, I just you know thank God for. It. You know all that he's done in our lives. Uh, I've heard Rodney Washington preach something good can come out of the hood. And you know what? When I look at him and I look at myself and I look at you know uh, we have little Sylvester and all of us, uh, I concluded that you know when you give your life to Christ, it doesn't matter where you live because where you you know. Uh, under divine influence, <coughs> something good can come out of us. He's a prime example. I'm a prime example. You're a prime example. You know, um, I was just looking at the video, and, and you know, I don't know why Alton didn't end up going in the NBA. This boy could play basketball so good. I used to envy him so bad. <laughs> him and Ed Hall, and oh my God, they were just. They could have been globe trotters. <laughs> 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 but you know, I just uh, I, I, I just uh, love what you know uh, God has done in your life, man. And you, you know, you just uh, you're a role model to so many people. You don't even know it. And I'm gonna tell this story uh, to. You didn't let me eat the macaroni. <laughs> I don't know if you remember this, but anyway, we got out of school early, me and Algie and, and uh, Melvin and you know a couple of other guys. But we went to we went to uh, y'all's house. Algie just said, "Come on, y'all, let's go to the house before we go up. We go on the basketball court." And we got there, and Miss Barbara had some something left over from Sunday dinner, man. And we were all hungry, and Algie said. Come on, let's go ahead and let's cook this and cook this, cook this, and then we can go. We got to hurry up for the home. You know. So <laughs> listen, out here we got this, what was left over from dinner. And man, I saw this macaroni Miss Barbara cooked. And I wanted that macaroni so bad. I just warmed it up and had the plate and everything. We were getting ready to eat. And the door opened and it was out. And all the came on. And all the came, you may not remember, Peter remember this man. Macaroni. <laughs> oh wow. That was, you know, I just 
just, I remember that. Uh, <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. We truly serve a powerful God. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for this opportunity tonight to stand before you and to say a few words about Al. I call him Al. I know his name is Alton, but I call him Al. He's been my friend ever since when we first met. Uh, that was, um, we was both in the Navy at the time we met, and uh, I think we got met up in, in the year of 1977. It was Al's first tour and my first tour. We met up at Neighbor Earth Station Oceana in Virginia Beach. See, but Al was a different type of character of man. That's why he became my friend from day one. We found out that we had a lot of things in common. Uh, Al, for one thing, uh, that I didn't have in common with, he ate a lot of carrots. <laughs> and I kept wondering why this man eats so many carrots. <laughs> this man ate carrots for breakfast, for lunch, and supper. <laughs> but that's just one thing about Al. <laughs> All the time we were together, Al always had a smile. On this cruise, this is where I really finally got to know what Al was made of. I found out that Al loved God. I found out that uh, Al had been with the Lord for a long time, for a few years, for a lot of years. So, a, a couple of us guys, Al was included, formed what we call a Bible study, a men's Bible study, a boy's ship when it wasn't one. And so many people came to Christ out there. And Al was a big influence to all those sailors coming to Christ. Amen. 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 A very good guy. Um, my husband and I, um, we were talking, and one of the things we like about Elton is that we admire your relationship with Cindy. And we think that you are great people. Okay. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, I know. And that's very important for us, robots. I also wrote this. <laughs> I know. I'm a crybaby. Um, I wrote that um, <laughs> he studies the Word of God, and that is very important. How, um, whenever I talk to you, you always know a lot about the Word. And I grew up in a house where someone knew a lot about the Word. So to see a man like that who knows a lot about the Word and studies God's Word, that, that is awesome to me. You know a lot of the biblical stories and the history, and you don't even know um, when I come to your house, I snoop around and look at your books and things. No, it's, it's always wholesome stuff. That's awesome to me. Because a lot of men live one way, but behind closed doors, it's another way. Yes. And when I got in your car this morning, you didn't even know I listened. You had the radio on and you were listening to godly music. So what you show and what I see is what you, I believe what you're doing. I don't think you're fake. Um, I, always, I always say that you're very popular. Um, you're with Aunt Jean, and I always am talking about you. She absolutely loves you. She loves all her kids, but she loves you. She loves Alta. She tells me how you were a good son. She always says that he was being and Alta was so good to me. He's a good. He was a good child, and that's that's why we're here. That's why God has given you a great wife. Amen. That's awesome, you all. Amen. You're good at bragging. You get bragging things on the other end. This is just what I know of. Um, I'm sorry, y'all. I wrote down crying. Oh, I think Elton is very handsome. You're very handsome to me. Yeah, he's handsome. And um, tall, handsome. My husband is handsome, but Elton's handsome, handsome too. <laughs> and he always looks good. You know, he always. Let me tell you this, and then I'll sit down. He's well groomed. You know, some men when they get older, they start taking baths. No, I'm just serious. They stop putting on cologne. You know, they just put on anything. If they 
it's okay to come out the door, like, it's the clothes on, you know? But after he always has a haircut, he comes down to get my haircut. That is important to me. It's important to me, and I think that's something that, you know, you, you show other men. You're a role model to other men. And so, I just want to tell you that I love you, and I love you, Cindy. Oh, I love <laughs> this is Vera, his, his other cousin. And Vera and your sisters, and how they're related, their father is Alton's mother's brother. That's how it is. All right, good afternoon. Alton, first of all, I want to say that um, I got a, an email from Crystal, and um, I just got a new phone because I had a dinosaur. And um, <laughs> the first email that came up on my phone was the birthday party. And so I was in Verizon, and I um, hit the button, and I was like, email, Crystal, Crystal, because Crystal don't email me on Facebook, Crystal. And it showed Alton, I was like, his birthday party, we were like, I said, oh my God. I haven't been on vacation, real talk, in years, because I just work, 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 work. I told my supervisor I'm going on vacation. She says, what about your time? I said, doc, and I'm gone. I am gone. And so I was happy to come to your birthday party, because Daddy and Aunt G are best sisters and brothers. And so outside of the eight that my mother gave us, you are the next best. You're our best, too. OK? I'm not like Dean. Dina can just ad lib off the top of her head. So um, I always ask God to give me the words to say. So I did this like in five minutes, so it had to be God. Okay. Um, but I shake really bad, so I had to go to the table. And uh, usually I use a podium. I'm used to doing the church announcements. So I had to do it like this. Because I shake so bad. And it's not a spirit. It might be a little bit of it, because you know, you can't fix your own body. But I'm going to do it like this. Okay. Maya Angelou quoted, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Cousin Alton, this is most fitting for you. The memories of how you made us feel as your cousin are impeccable. Being a great babysitter, having a loud laugh, riding us in your big brown Ford LTD, and exposing us to all the different styles of eating foods other than soul foods. Thanks for the dried bananas, the kiwi that made our mouths itch, the eggplants that really tasted horrible, and any other food you convinced us to eat because we will live healthy and be strong. Alton, you are my dad's favorite nephew. You left an, an amorous mark in his heart when he was, when, when as a young man, you would take the hour drive from Norfolk to Rushmere to support his church and be the best usher. Wow, what a man you were. You always strive to be a great man in the Lord. No one can say, no one can say Uncle Harold like you. Thanks, Alton, for marrying a good woman who is not only a role model wife, but a sister in our hearts. You only have one beautiful sister by birth, but you adopted the five Pretlow girls as sisters too. Lastly, Alton, I have fond memories to how you allowed me to have my very first grown-up experience staying with you all in Virginia Beach and Witch Duck Landing. I especially enjoyed how you cooked the turkey and vegetables in the big bag every week. And when I asked you how you cook, why you cooked it every week, you shut your eyes and said, so the kids could eat healthy and get all the nutrients, you know, Cousin Vera, in a quick meal. You are not only a nice father and husband publicly, but you were behind closed doors. Just like the fuzzy feeling I believe my dad feels when you say, Uncle Harold, I have that same fuzzy feeling when I hear Crystal say, Cousin Vera, and remembering how Maurice would distinctively say, Cousin Viola. <laughs> Alton, please know that today I am here because of the way you made me feel. I love you. This is Alton's sister's son. Wow. There's so much to say, um, especially following what my cousins were saying about my mom. He's been a class act for my whole life. Um, 
I grew up, I didn't have a father in my household due to some medical things with him, so he was not able to be an example. But um, I had a great uncle who stepped in, or have a great uncle that have stepped in, and he wore many hats. You know, he was a, a father figure to his children, a husband to his wife, and he gave me a blueprint of how to be there for my children and my wife. And if my children are here now and my wife is also here, if, if you appreciate me as a father, you need to appreciate him as being a great uncle to you guys. You know, there, you know no road is ever smooth. You know, there's been some bumps along in the road, but they, they, they don't have no comparison on the great example he has set. Um, he, 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 I've seen him, I've been in his household, I live with him, and just like my cousin said before, what you see out of him is what you get. You never see him wishy-washy, never, never. And I, I, just, I just don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it, man. <laughs> I don't know. I've never seen him stray away from his belief in the Lord and God's word. He's always have a good word of encouragement for you. Um, he's positive, um, and he, he just a perfect model. He's, um, I mean, he, yeah, he's a heck of a basketball player. <laughs> and he's awesome. And, you know, growing up, he's. Um, I remember I was got on my first basketball team, and he didn't introduce me to basketball. It's something, you know, growing up in the projects, introduced me to basketball, man. Um, my uncle, he, he saw something in me in that, and um, he wanted to go ahead and get me on a basketball team. And he said, you know what, son, let me go ahead and just, how about I just coach the team? Oh. Yeah, he decided to coach the team to and make sure I was able to get on the team. Mm. And um, he coached it, and he was a good example to not only me, but to others. So he's a great guy, um, and just like Vera, I do not take time off of work for hardly anything. And, but I, would, I, would, I could not pass up this opportunity to be here to help celebrate my uncle's birthday. Love you, man. Wow. And, um, I think I got to know Brother Alpin probably we went back in 96, we went on there. Uh, the former church I was at, uh, Brother Alton uh, and uh, Sister Sandy and Maurice and uh, Sister Christian, they came to the church where I, I used to serve at. And like, like they said, uh, uh, Brother Connor was very inquisitive. He's, when he came there, he, he didn't come down, he said it, he came and he slit and observed and into the service and everything, but after what he, you know, he came around, he's a person that goes around to look. And, and, uh, and they said, uh, you see that guy right now? I said, yeah. He said, man, he asked all kind of questions. <laughs> 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 and, 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 so, <laughs> um, <laughs> I was, uh, I was one that, um, I, I, I was, I was already a deacon. Uh, Brother Collins and, and uh, his family, it came several times there at the church. But when we left the church, left that church and went over to the uh, first uh, first church, Hopewell, uh, then we wind up, Brother Cullen was over there. I said, uh, I have you back over there. <laughs> and he wind up over there, uh, over there at the first church. And uh, Brother Cullen is, uh, like they say, he's a, he's a, um, a jewel of a man. He's, he's a man that's if he can help you, he'll help you. All we got, like you see, all we got encouraged were me and him went through some depth um, uh, conversations and things about a lot of subjects and things. Talk about our children, talk about our families and things. And like I can say, he is a family man. He's a family man. And, um, and I always was a family man as well. Uh, some of the same traits that, um, that he they, they talked about, those are the things that I tried to. Um, um, use my, my family with. Um, I always cared my family, always uh, tried to lead them in, in the right direction and make sure that first thing first is that Christ. And you you had 60 and I'm a little past 60. 
<laughs> but, uh, but Brother Collins, ever since I've met him, he been, we've been, we joke a lot, and like you just said, I call him a bishop all the time, you know, because he, <laughs> if I don't get, if I don't call him bishop, he gonna call me bishop, so we be talking about it, look, it's all in fun, because we be talking about the word of God. We be telling people what God said, what God's word said. And, um, and so you can see the results. So, Brother Collins, tribute to you for six o. I remember when I hit six o. I was at work, but uh, you hit six o. You retired. So, <laughs> God bless you. I hope you see that many more. <laughs> Brother Eddie Yarbrough come up and speak about Alton as uh, a deacon in our church. Hello, everyone. Hello. Um, deacon Connor is a, uh, we have a special bond because I've known, I didn't just get to know Deacon Connor when he came over the first church. I knew Deacon Connor for close to over 30 years. He was a bachelor. I had just gotten married. <laughs> you know, so, um, but from that point forward, I had an opportunity to meet him. He was always the same. Uh, you, you hear people say that, and, and the young lady said here, that <clears throat> what you see with Elgin is what you get. And that was all the time. Um, he's very engaging, uh, very inquisitive. I mean, he, I think he missed his calling because he should have been working for the CIA or something. <laughs> 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 he was, he was, you know, he was off to even engaging like that. And, and what he was actually doing was he was putting you at ease. And after a period of time, we became friends. But what really impressed me the most about Alton even back in Norfolk, in his 20s, he was already a deacon. He was already serving in the church. Mm -hmm. And he would bring his Bible to work. Allison and I served on similar ministries. We was in the Brotherhood together, which is a men's ministry over there. Um, and from 81 to that point, Alton was still Alton. He hadn't changed. Um, I remember that, that she said that he had a good memory. Well, I tell you the flip side with me, you know, for those fellows that are close to him, he has a good memory when he want to remember. <laughs> <laughs> I said that to say this: instead of telling you no, I can't, I don't want to do it or whatever, instead of Alex doing that and probably letting you down and making you feel like it hurts your feelings or something, you just act like. He don't remember you ever telling me. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you can't really get mad with him. You know? but, uh, that's just the way he did things. Congratulations on number six. And uh, God bless you, man. And keep on hanging in there. Yes, sir. <laughs> 